This is the plaintiff, Tanika Wiggins. She says she booked a party hall for her son's second birthday bash. And the inept defendant double booked the room. When she showed up for the party, there was a different party in the room already. And she wants a refund of the $3,000. She's now out. This is the defendant, Royal Laradin. He says he admits he made a terrible mistake and double-booked his party room. But that didn't give the plaintiff the right to attack the other party-goers and to get into a physical altercation with them. He tried to do right by the plaintiff by refunding her money, but the woman wants him to now pay for plane tickets, and he refuses. He's accused of being a party pooper. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she booked a venue for her daughter's second birthday, but the defendant double booked the room and now she wants a refund. The defendant says the woman attacked the other party guests. The cops were called and she's being unreasonable. It's the case of double trouble. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Wiggins, what happened? Um, Last year, November, I forget the exact day, I booked a party for my two-year-old son. He was turning two. Um, you know, this was the year of the pandemic. My kids are used to going out every weekend. Like, we do a lot of outgoing activities, but they didn't do nothing all year. So I decided, you know, I could bring 25 people to this hall. I um, brought my mom a plane ticket, my niece a plane ticket, and I literally went all out. I would never usually spend that type of money on a two-year-old's party because he will never remember it. But I just wanted... It's not about them, to is it? <laughs> it's just really not about them, but go ahead. Yeah, right. So you went all out. And what happened? What happened was when I arrived, there was... Well, I brought my stuff there. But when I went back, I got a call from the person who was supposed to put the decorations up that um, there was a party going on. So I was... The first thing I assumed was maybe it was a party ending that stayed a little too long. Um, I, the father of my child gets there. He also tells me like, there's a whole party that just set up. Um, I get there, I go inside, I ask, um, you know, I understand they're frustrated at the other party. Right. But wait, did, did you call the defendant? And I, I mean, when did you call the defendant and say, what's up? Oh yeah. I called when my son's father told me like, yeah, there's definitely a party going on. So I called him. He said, he's gonna, I think he said he's gonna see what's going on or he, admitted, I don't know if he admitted it at that moment, that he did double book the party, you know, human error. Um, so I understood that. I went inside because I spent so much money on decorations at a bounce house. Um, I did go inside and I spoke to two older ladies. And I first asked them, you know, I'm so sorry for intruding your party. No, it's aggravating because my now my party gets the going in the, you know, going back and forth. So I get it's frustrating for them. But I asked them, do you mind if I check around and make sure none of my belongings was left in here? What were the belongings and, um, that were there? Nice. Some of the decorations. I brought the bounce house there. I brought things. But the bounce house wasn't set up or anything, was it? No, okay. no, it wasn't set up. Okay. But I just, you know, I rented this bounce house. So now I got to make sure I got all the little state things and every, you know, just my, I just want to. Yeah, I got it. So you go in and, and you get your stuff and what happens? The mother of the birthday party that, that was going on, she comes from the back, very aggressive, very angry, tells me to get the F out. Um, I, you know, I respond to her saying, you know, I just want to find my things. I want to make sure none of my things are in here before I leave. And me and her ends up, you know, having words. So then now I'm already frustrated, but I wasn't trying to take it out on them because the other party did nothing. They did nothing but book the party like I did. It was right. The, um, so what happened? The big guy, so we end up just exchanging words. I leave. She comes. She spits on the father of my son. Um, I go back inside the building. She she punches me. We end up. I was fighting four women at the same time. You were fighting. Wait, wait, wait. This got into a physical fight? Oh, yeah. She, she <laughs> came and spit. She spit. At the, my son's father, she spit on him. So I, I entered back in now trying to defuse it and I get punched right in my face. So well, who punched I'm you? Trying to, trying to who punched me. you? Uh, this is um, a party the, the two year old's gonna remember. Yeah. Who punched you? Do you know or no? The mother, the mother, the, the aggressive lady that came from the back. Okay. 
So um, it just ends up, it was, it happened so quick. Um, huh? All I know is I was attacked. I had just got my hair done. So I had three adult women pulling on the extensions. Oh. Um, it was my, my, my mom was like outside the, the building, but she had my kids. So she didn't come inside, but she seen it and was trying to get other people to like come in and help, like to break it up. It ends up, my dad's a minister. His name's Willie Wiggins. He's a minister. He was attacked in the during this going on. He was punched in the face multiple times. Did the um, police come out? Yes. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Do you have a police report? I don't. He Do you have a police report, know. Mr. Loradin? Um, so Do you have a police of, report? They wouldn't allow me to get the police report. Nobody has a police report, report for me to see. No. Wow. No, okay. Mr. Loradin, let me ask you, what happened here? Just a, uh, you double booked? You made a mistake and you double booked? Yeah, so I did make a mistake and uh, one event overlapped another event. What does overlap to mean? So her event was, was from four to eight and the event before her was, was from two to six. So two hours overlap. That's pretty big. I mean, what are pe people aren't going to yeah. stick around without a party for two hours. Right? Was, so what but, happens? But, she what, calls you, you realize what you did and what do you do? So I call her. No, she calls me. So immediately, you know, I, I, I apologize to her. And that's, you know, um, but she was swearing. She was erratic, cursing. She hung up the phone. I called her back again and she was still swearing. At that same moment, the other party, they called me as well. And they were saying, hey, you know, um, we're getting ready to cut the cake. We don't mind leaving early. So right there I had a solution. So I called her back a couple of times. She picked up. She was still erratic, swearing, saying that she just wants her money back. Hung up the phone. So, Wait, did you, know, you ever get out? Moment, Why don't you start? The, you know, they'll end their party an hour early. You start your party an hour late. I can't, I can't, I can't so she doesn't even it. know that any. And do you have any proof that the other side? Because if I'm the other side, I'm not going to end my party early. So do you have any proof that the other side had said that? No. Do you have affidavits from the other party people? No. OK, so you speak to the other party people, obviously. And do they tell you that the the physical altercations that happened and whose fault do yeah, they, they say did. it was? Well, they said that how she came in um, asking them, why are you why are you using my uh, event decorations? And they told her that uh, they were not using her event decorations because I, I believe her, her party is for her son and their party is for uh, a girl. And they were like, they're not even using her stuff. Anyway, make a long story short, she got really violent. She picked up a chair. She threw it at them. And she had two other people who were with her. And they beat up both husband and wife. They uh, even had stolen eyes shut. Who did? Both the husband and the wife. They got of the original, of the uh, earlier party. Yeah. Do you have pictures of uh, that? Did they send you no, text pictures or anything? I don't have any of that. How did you know that they had swollen eyes shut? I was there. I, oh, when you I got there. The eyes were, so you physically I, I went them. over there. All right. Tell me yeah, what happens was, when you physically go over there. What happens? Is she still on the I scene or no? She left the scene. She wasn't even there anymore. Were the police there? Her father, was there? Police was there. The fire department, her father and her two, two gentlemen. That's from her party. And, so, and, and the other people were still there. OK. And the security guards was there. So what time did all this happen? It happened. It had to have happened between four and four thirty p.m. because her her party was starting at four p.m. All right. Um, so Ms. Wiggins, um, wow. So what'd you do about your son's birthday? We didn't have a party. I was distraught. Um, it was my face that was actually I was all swollen. My do you have pictures? I have high cheekbones. I don't. I, I should have took pictures. I don't have pictures. I don't. Neither one of us. I we should have I should have took pictures, but I did not. Um, I went in there very polite, and they were actually polite to me. The older ladies were very kind to me. They had like a princess party. I know their main colors were pink. I was having a construction party, orange and black. So I was very aware that they did not touch my decorations. Um, I just asked it to make sure none of my decorations were left behind. 
because the person. Well, I just don't understand how it turned into a melee. Because all you got to do is quietly I mean, go back your stuff, right? But you don't need an entire platoon of people. I think what happened is there's a middle of a party, and then there's like 18 people walking in because your party and and it's supposed to start, and the whole thing just got out of hand. But uh, so what ends up happening, uh, Mr. Uh, Leverdine? You got like one job, which is don't double book. Um, uh, so you know, but errors happen, mistakes happen. So what ends up happening? Did you have to refund? the money of the first party yes i had to refund their money and then i took the money back okay and then i offered i offered to give uh, tanika her, her money back and i was offering her that even from the phone and she wasn't having it i, I even offered to let her start her party a little bit after eight o'clock from to 12 o'clock right you said that I can have a party. Eight o'clock from twelve o'clock from eight o'clock to twelve o'clock? Yeah, my two year old's party. That's what he offered me. And Is that okay, stop. Stop talking, Ms. Wiggins. Mr. Leverdine, did you offer her five o'clock to eight o'clock or eight o'clock to twelve o'clock? I offer her to start at five because they were willing to leave. Okay. Is that true or not true, Ms. Wiggins? Man, that doesn't even make sense. You know, we're both intelligent people. That doesn't make sense. No, it does make sense. That's point. why I'm asking you, did he offer you to start no, at five? I wouldn't want that either because uh, where, what my people who are supposed to be there for are all going to be standing there doing what for an hour. But did he offer you at five? He offered me from eight to 12. 8 p.m. to 12. Do you have the contract eight. with the other people? I have the contract, but I didn't submit it to you guys. I, I have it right in front of my face, but I didn't you submit it. You have it in front of your face? Put it up to the camera. Um, you want to, yeah. I just want to see the contract. Their party was from two to six. Their party was not from two to eight. So, uh, there's, I don't, I doubt intensely anybody ever said to you have a party from eight to 12. You can put it down in any event. Let's talk about what you're suing for. You're suing for the hall rental. Well, obviously, um, you're suing for the bounce house that you didn't get to use or didn't get to use the way you intended. You're suing for $400 in decorations. And what you've shown as proof of that is just a withdrawal for $400. But where's the receipt for the decorations? I don't have it. Well, I, I don't have a picture the picture of the decorations. I, I threw them well, away because they say happy second birthday, Keith. And I just, it made me mad every time I look at it. I, I know, I don't blame you, <laughs> but, like, but couldn't you? <laughs> couldn't you? I uh, should have, I know. I didn't cover my tracks at all. No, but where did you buy them? Online, and I have. Well, then you should be able to give me proof of having purchased them because you purchased them I, online. It was two different. I had um, certain things from online, like the goodie bags was from online. The um, board of that, it was like a. Yeah, bag. I don't want you to give me a, a, a rousing rendition. I want you to give me the proof that you bought it. So if I give you a, a little bit of time to get the proof that they were purchased online with a date that shows that you put and that is construction stuff for a second birthday, you'll be able to do that, right? Yes, ma'am. I can get some. I'm going to give you 24 hours to do that and I'll leave that part of this judgment open. Some of them. Well, the ones you get me, I can't, here's the thing. You got to be able to prove your damages in court. I can't just, you can't show me a withdrawal slip for 400 and say, I spent 400 on decoration. You have to actually prove to me what you spent. I'll give you 24 hours to submit proof of stuff. And, and, and it needs to be good proof. Okay. It needs to be either the receipt for the stuff, which you can get online if you bought online. And I better see your name on it and it better be construction stuff and it better have the right date. Let's put a pin okay. in the decorations. Your hair, you're but suing for your I hair. No, we're done with the decorations. You're suing for your hair. $450 for your hair. You know, I can see you, right? I can see that you just rolled your eyes at me. Your hair. Why does he have to pay for your hair? It was pulled out my head. Right, but he didn't pull it off your head. Why doesn't the lady who pulled it off your head have to pay for your hair? Like, why does he have because to? Because it was his. It was his fault that I was attacked. Because they were aggravated that we kept going in and out of their place. Okay, I don't. I think that's a little remote. I don't think he told those people go attack her. I, I, so no, I that's not a compensable expense. Emotional distress is not a compensable expense. The bounce house, the food, and the plane tickets are what we need to talk about. What happened with the food? Everything was thrown away. I didn't have any party. I had nothing after that. I went home. I threw, I was crying. Like he said, I wasn't swearing. I was crying, having anxiety attacks. Um, I was very emotional. I was just 
I was over with the day. I've okay. never been in a physical altercation a day in my life. That's the first time I've ever been in a physical Good altercation. Lord. So I was over it. What did you, did you ever say to him, I, I, I want you to pay me X? And he said, no, I'm not going to pay you X. What did you ask him yes, to pay you? For everything I had receipts for. I asked him if he could just pay me for the things I had receipts How, how for. much? What was the figure you asked him for? I don't remember. Whatever, I, I submitted them to him. I, I, I understand. Do you remember the figure? Yes or no? You don't remember the figure? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, why should he pay for the plane tickets? Because your, your mom and your niece did get to come Maybe this isn't what they expected to be at when they came. Yeah, I brought them only for the party. Yeah. Only for the party. All right. Here is how I'm going to rule. First of all, you are entitled to the hall rental back, of course. You are also entitled to the bounce house back. Regardless of whether anybody ate the chicken wings, you're entitled to the food back. Um, that's $881.11. I'm going to give you 24 hours to provide any proof you can online of, you know, from your online purchases. They should all be readily available. Uh, and typically a judge will look at you and say, do you have them? No, tough. You don't get any money. So I'm being very nice to you, giving you another 24 hours. Thank you. Okay. All Thank right. you. All right. That's all right. I just want to make sure. I'm sorry, darling. I know this had to have been awful for you. Well, even if, I don't, if, if you were the aggressor, that's horrible. If you're telling me you've never been in a fist fight, I kind of doubt it. Um, and, and no matter what, this had to be a terrible, horrible day. And it's good he's two and he's not going to remember it. Um, and I hope that you made lemonade out of lemons for the rest of the weekend when your mom and your niece were there. I think the plane tickets is not a foreseeable expense of a party that the, that the hall guy should have to pay. Um, so I'm not going to reimburse those. Um, the hair, no. Um, and emotional distress, I, even though I know it was emotionally distressing, you would have to show in order to get damages for that, like medical treatment, sleeplessness, you know, and, and like a, a extreme outrageous conduct on his part. Not if, you know, if you were suing the other family, it'd be different, but you're, What's the bad that happened? The bad that happened that he's negligently booked two parties. He sure as heck didn't want to have to give everybody back their money on both parties and have this melee happen. That's so it, he, his conduct isn't the kind of outrageous conduct that's so extreme that emotional distress has to be paid out by him. Um, he didn't hit you. He didn't, you know, like, so it, it, that's not something you can claim against him. So I'm ruling in your favor in the amount of $881.11, plus giving you 24 hours to prove up the, the decorations uh, if you can. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff gets at least $881 uh, from the judge, maybe $400 or so more if she can prove it. Uh, that's a far cry from the $3,000 she wanted. Uh, Mr. Loradin, let me ask you about your reaction to uh, to the judge's decision. You got to give at least $880 back and maybe more. What do you think? I believe the judge is an amazing individual. I don't feel that I owe $800 or more. Um, I do feel that if anything, I would owe a refund for her event not being able to take place um, because I did offer her an alternative, which would, would have allowed her to start an hour later, but it's, it's her right to, to have started at 4 p.m. So I feel that she does deserve a refund that she, for the place that she booked. Well, the judge disagrees with you. I can see how you feel. Ha has this ever happened to you before? You ever double booked parties like this and had that kind of reaction? First time it ever happened. It's oh. never happened before. And I've been uh, had maybe over 100, 200 events, and it's never taken place before. Oh, that's a shame. Well, you can see what happens when you when you make a mistake. <laughs> it can get pretty bad. Uh, Ms. Wiggins, let yeah. me ask you uh, how you feel about this. I know it was a, an upsetting day. What happened to other people who were coming to the party? And it, was somebody Everybody there telling came. them it's been canceled? Everybody showed home? up, and they all had to leave. Everybody came. I feel like I should have been entitled to $3,000. Um I know he wasn't the one who put his hands on me, but his, his, what he did caused that, you know, we, me and that other party would have never had that altercation had he didn't double book. But hey, the judge said what she said. I have to respect that. All righty. Well, look, I think I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. That's what happened. And uh, I know it caused you emotional distress, but, you know, unfortunately, you couldn't collect for that. OK, you heard what the judge said. Get her that proof and maybe you'll get some more money as well. Good luck to you.
So that this is really an interesting case. The defendant clearly breached the contract, right, by double booking. But in terms of damages, you know, there are certain things that the plaintiff was entitled to, which the judge gave her. There are other things that are not foreseeable. The word foreseeable is critical because if it's not foreseeable, the defendant's not responsible. So if there are unusual circumstances, let the other person know ahead of time. Do you ever hear about current lawyers who were inspired to go into law from watching people's court when they were younger? Yes, that actually happens uh, a couple times a year, and it's really? incredibly touching when it does. But someone will either write or I'll run into, you know, so someone will stop me and say, you know, Uriah went to law school, which is really very, very sweet. Does it make you feel old? Like, I've been on the show some, that well, long. It makes people... me feel old when they say something like, I used to watch it with my dearly departed grandmother. Right. Like, that will make God. Well, but it, well, I've been doing kids. this 20-something years. You know? <laughs> um, but no, it just makes you feel good. It really yeah. does. It makes you feel good when I'm part of someone's memories. Um, right. and, and especially when I, you know, the idea that I could open the door to someone's uh, potential to inspire somebody. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It, absolutely. It, and it's uh, a, a wonderful byproduct of being on television for this long. Right, and and you still stay active with with your law school. I do. I love right. mentoring, and I, I uh, I'm active with my law school. I I interview for both my law school and their college, my kids' college. Right. right. Uh, I interview prospective students uh, for admission. Right. Um, and then, at, you know, I have the malady that I love them all. They're all, I just want to encourage all of them. And more room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let all these kids. Let everybody in. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it is touching to hear that. It's got to feel rewarding. Yeah.